Mass for You at Home is proudly supported by Catholic Mission. To learn how a gift in your will can leave a legacy of eternal hope and a lasting impact for generations to come, call 1-800-257-296 or visit catholicmission.org.au slash wills. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in ordinary time, and we'll hear our Lord's familiar call to be vigilant, to be ready and dressed for action. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of, of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. That night had been foretold to our ancestors, so that, once they saw what kind of oaths they had put their trust in, they would joyfully take courage. This was the expectation of your people, the saving of the virtuous and the ruin of their enemies. For by the same act with which you took vengeance on our foes, you made us glorious by calling us to you. The devout children of worthy men offered sacrifice in secret, and this divine pact they struck with one accord that the saints would share the same blessings and dangers alike, and forthwith they had begun to chant the hymns of the fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. 
Bring out your joy to the Lord, O oh, you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. They are happy, whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own. Happy the people the Lord happy has the chosen, has chosen to, to be his own. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O oh Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Happy the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Only faith can guarantee the blessings that we hope for or prove the existence of the realities that at present remain unseen. It was for faith that our ancestors were commended. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed the call to set out for a country that was the inheritance given to him and his descendants, and that he set out without knowing where he was going. By faith he arrived, as a foreigner, in the promised land, and lived there as if in a strange country, with Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. They lived there in tents, while he looked forward to a city founded, designed, and built by God. It was equally by faith that Sarah, in spite of being past the age, was made able to conceive, because she believed that he who had made the promise would be faithful to it. Because of this, there came from one man, and one who was already as good as dead himself, more descendants than could be counted, as many as the stars of heaven or the grains of sand on the seashore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Be watchful and ready when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, See that you are dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like men waiting for their master to return from the wedding feast, ready to open the door as soon as he comes and knocks. Happy those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. I tell you solemnly, he will put on an apron, sit them down at table and wait on them. It may be in the second watch he comes, or in the third, but happy those servants if he finds them ready. You may be quite sure of this, that if the householder had known at what hour the burglar would come, he would not have let anyone break through the wall of his house. You too must stand ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme of vigilance is one that we hear about quite often in the Gospels. And when we hear how insistent our Lord is about it, it's obviously something very important. And yet, what makes it even more difficult is that 
we're told we don't know at what hour or what watch of the night. And in the Greek, there are four different watches. In the Hebrew, there were three. So the first watch is between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. The second watch, 9 p.m. to midnight, and so on and so forth. So, of course, at night is the time where we're relaxing. It's our downtime. It's the time for rest. So how can we be watchful and vigilant when we're supposed to be relaxing and unwinding? What kind of watchfulness? Well, it's the watchfulness of faith. It's the watchfulness of being attentive to spiritual things. I can just hear some of you asking me, well, what does that mean, though, when you're tired? How can you be attentive? It seems like a contradiction in terms, doesn't it? Well, certainly seems like that. But remember, the gospel often has what we call paradoxes. So things that seem to be contradictory, but in fact are not. So when our Lord is telling us, you must be watchful, you must be vigilant, it means being attentive insofar as we can be at that time. Obviously, it's not that we are not meant to sleep, because he knows we are meant to sleep. It's not that we are not meant to rest. He knows that we are meant to rest. Remember another point in the Gospels where he says there were so many people coming and going that the apostles didn't even have time to rest. And he himself calls them out of their ministry and says, let us go to a lonely place by ourselves. Even at that time, our Lord is still referring to being vigilant and watchful. It means essentially that we're always trying to look at our life and our world from the perspective of faith. We are never meant to categorize things or compartmentalize our life. This is my holy time, my time of faith and prayer, and this is my work time, this is my hobby time, this is my other time. That just doesn't cut it. One thing we can learn a lot from is the first responders. First responders are always training, they're always prepared, they're always ready to spring into action. But, of course, even first responders have their downtime. But even when their downtime is acting, they've got their pages with them, their phones are ready, they're set to go for action. And this is what Christ asks of us. So yes, we live our life to the full. We work, we rest, we play. But we must be ready and vigilant at all times to respond to that quiet voice of his and to always be ready for the enemy of our souls who is ever present and ready to attack us when he feels and thinks we are weakest. Let us stand to profess our faith, the faith of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With our hearts ever watchful, let us turn to God, who is our help and our shield that the young people in our community may respond generously with open hearts and willing spirits if the Lord calls them to the priesthood, diaconate, or consecrated life. Your people pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That married couples and those discerning marriage may be strengthened by the love and guidance of the Holy Family. Your people pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the lives of those called to serve God as single people will be filled with the Lord's grace and love. Your people pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you call us to live with generosity and in service of others. Hear our prayers 
and keep our lamps burning brightly, that we may be ready to meet your Son when he comes again. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Oh. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shining. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Today's Mass is proudly sponsored by Guardian Funerals and Calvary Healthcare. Thank you for your generous support of Mass for You at Home. If you are in a position to contribute or contribute again, you can help secure the ongoing future of this vital ministry. May God continue to bless us all as we seek to follow Him.